Deep Dive Film School makes no claim of ownership of the film footage used in this episode. The film footage is owned entirely by the copyright holders. Also, we're going to spoil the hell out of this movie, so this is your warning. Welcome to Deep Dive Film School. Oh, this week we're going to get into our third installment of our stand-up film festival with the 2017 film, The Big Sick. Let's dive on in. Everybody. I am Adam Sherlock. And I'm Adam Pulcher. And if you like what you see slash here, please like and subscribe. You can find us in all the spaces and places that people what? Find good media. That is right. That's right. Go ahead and follow us on our platforms, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, all the places you find a podcast. Please join us on this journey. That's right. Um, uh, so this is the third installment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of our stand-up festival. Um, full disclosure, I'd never seen this movie before. Oh, really? Yeah. You haven't. I, I had not. I and saw it at Sundance. Yeah, I remember you telling me that you had seen it at Sundance. And obviously, uh, <clears throat> Kamel... Nagiani. Nagiani yep. uh, mm -hmm. is now like... I mean, he's a, a very well-known face. He he's been in a ton of stuff. Been, I think he mostly got famous from Silicon Valley. Yes. Um, that was a huge one, the Mike Judge project mm -hmm. on HBO. But then, like, <laughs> a lot, you know, his stand-up is one of those ubiquitous things you see all the time on social so media. It's great, too. People, he's really good. People send around clips of his. He's just a... His delivery is one of those classic um, stand-up comedians where I just go... When you hear him start talking, the way th that he will really utilize the sort <clears throat> of inflection of his uh, Indian accent, but then he he loves to do these speed up, speed up, speed up, and then slow way down, mm -hmm. and then do the punchline. Yep, you're right. <clears throat> and then do the punchline, right? Like that is like such his style, and it always works on me. It's <laughs> deeply, deeply funny. Yeah, no, he's great. Um, uh, Pakistani-born uh, comedian, like mm -hmm. you said. Um, I think he lived kind of the first 15 years of his life there and then moved to America. <clears throat> and this is kind of a, by you know, very similar to Sleepwalk With Me as far as like, hey, I'm kind of playing myself in this movie. Right. He's playing himself. And this is a real experience that he yeah. had with his now wife, right? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, at a certain point, the stand the stand up's more periphery in this than it is probably in some of the other movies in this festival. Although... I think it's important for his character and watching him on stage and watching him develop and how your kind of personal life can really invade your work life sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, and also I think it is symbolic as the cudgel between him and his family. Like, uh, obviously later on, his relationship uh, with his uh, girlfriend slash ex-girlfriend becomes the centerpiece of that mm -hmm. but it sort of is you know i mean you think about this idea of a kid growing up in pakistan loving uh american, american culture, culture mm -hmm. and then them moving to america mm -hmm. and so he's ready to immerse himself into that uh through the comedy the stand-up comedy scene and that that really becomes symbolic of how he's quote unquote disappointing his parents right it's just like him and it's like it's the only thing he wants to do but yeah. just through the act of doing the only thing <clears throat> he wants to do he is a failure to his parents he is a disappointment to his parents of course yeah. yeah yeah and this is kind of him trying to break out trying to become an up-and-comer you know at the beginning we see you know the girl ends up being his kind of girlfriend at the first show um, but he also gets an invite to a comedy festival and I you know, he has this little band of his comedian buddies like Bo Burnham and uh, Aidy Bryant and Kurt uh, Braunohler. So yeah. Kurt Braunohler is underrated. If yes. you've ever watched his stand up, it's absolutely hilarious. All three of them have uh, some my favorite fantastic though, moments. David Hella Greer is the coked out guy who like is is the host. <laughs> what for the were you night. doing in there? <laughs> Nothing. Just yeah, I can't remember what he says, but it was just like some fake ass excuse, yeah, like yeah, yeah, you know, making the schedule or something. Um, <clears throat> right at the top, the thing I want to talk about that that struck me the most through this entire movie and it's like e even though the early stuff with just him and emily mm -hmm. um this is happening quite a bit it's very <laughs> apparent once ray romano and uh uh holly hunter, holly hunter mm -hmm. appear which is this movie is very easily laid back hilarious mm -hmm in a way that looks effortless. And then when you really think about the lines you're laughing at, 
takes so much to write it perfectly. <laughs> like there are, and, and I, I, I actually wrote down the line that I couldn't stop laughing at in part because of how clever it was. And it's, it's, it's Ray, it's a line of Ray Romano. I was going to say he's the unsung hero. Of this oh, movie. when they're, when he's sharing a bedroom <clears> with him. <throat> yep. I thought that's where you're going. And he says, Love isn't easy. It's hard. That's why they call it love. And Camille says, that doesn't make any sense. And Romano says, yeah, I thought I could just start talking and something smart would come out. That is such a brilliant line. And the delivery and the cut back and forth between the two of them, you're like, that has to be written within an inch of its life. That has to be so perfectly executed. But then when you just watch it, you're just laughing because it's so good yeah. and it looks effortless, well, but none of this and, is. And they're super cute as a couple, right? Yes. And, you know, he, fake, he, he she calls an Uber and he accepts. And, and you know, their first date's super cute and they, you know, um, they keep going through these little moments of their relationship where it's really good. And they're yeah. starting to be honest with each other about things and whatever. And, you know, she has to shit in the middle of the night. That kind <laughs> of stuff. Like, a mate is so funny. <laughs> like there's little things like that. But when the parents get involved, the movie changes. It does. It does. Uh, or, or obviously when she gets when sick, she gets sick. when it changes. But putting them in there as these two characters you haven't met in the first half of the movie, just knowing them through her. Yeah. Um, it, and who they cast it, amazing like ray romano is it's so it's the best thing i've ever hand. seen him like, do it's it's really great so right? so good like and like he tries so hard and he has terrible he's just like the perfect dad like like broke ass like i cheated on my wife once because of, he was at you a, live in a terrible place and you're not very funny and it's not really a living and he's like I thought that'd be like an uplifting part at the end of it. He's like, yeah, but you, 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 get you, it. you get it, you know, <laughs> and you're just like, fuck, it's so good. So obviously the writing here is fantastic. Yeah. But to your point, so him and his wife wrote that to wrote this together after they went through. So this how the hell. All right. Palter. Yeah. You're writing a movie. You're writing a screenplay with your wife. <laughs> and in it, you have to write a real fight the two of you got in yeah. together and it needs to feel real. And both people need to kind of come away feeling a, or looking a little bit like pieces of shit. How do you and Katie, your <laughs> wife do that? Cause I'm like, I couldn't do that with Abby. That sounds terrifying. Yet somehow they, when they wrote this, they made that fight so, they get into feel so real. And they say such deeply hurtful things to I each other. I think first you write separately and then come to the table God, but that still sounds but also, like a nightmare. I think how you do it is you write what you know. And if you both experience that, talk about it when and get he, over it. When and that she's makes them like, closer as a, as a couple, too. Because, all right, let's back up a little bit. So we keep, even while we're getting their meet cute and they're going on these dates <clears> together, <throat> we then on the back end are going to his family dinners. Right. Yes. And mom is playing matchmaker yeah, like, over and over like and who over. Dropped in, yeah. Oh God. And it's so uncomfortable. And like I watched X Files, like all that <laughs> you're like, oh God, <laughs> yeah. no, you know, like Well, and he's supposed to be praying in the basement, he's just playing video games. Yeah, or, or he just sets his, the alarm on his phone and he's just like staring out the window, <laughs> yeah. like whatever. Uh, and he, but he lays down the rug and then rolls it back up, which I love that he goes that far. Yeah. <laughs> but obviously he's not a practicing Muslim, but also has no interest in any of these women and doesn't, yeah. you know, he doesn't, it's not like he's like, oh, I don't want a Pakistani wife. He's like, I want to, if I was going to find somebody, which I'm not even looking for them, I want it to be somebody that I like. Mm -hmm. Right. And so he meets Emily, but it's like, even that, you know, feels the like that class. There's a culture clash. Completely. And there's that kind of one foot out the door thing. Again, in a very forgetting Sarah Marshall thing, he has a one man show. Oh, with the TMT, like, uh, oh TMNT poster in yeah, the background. But it's like the whole thing with the. It's like the history of Pakistan. Yeah, it's like, it's a, you know, the number one exporter of concrete or something. It's just so like, fucking embarrassing. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And he has. A, no, but no, and it, he redeems himself later, and it, it looks much better. Show so anyway, he has he has that cigar box, and inside of it are all of the pictures yeah. of all of these girls. It's like they're it's like they're giving him his their stats, mm -hmm. right? And for some reason, he keeps saving them, and it's not like he's saving them because he's like, uh, he's no. saving them because it's embarrassing to him. But that's not what it looks like to Emily when she finds them. Yeah, and the fight <clears throat> that ensues between the two of them, I mean, when he comes back at her and he's like. I thought you wanted to be a fucking therapist, but you're not, you're no good at this. Like <laughs> it's so 
I love they don't they don't pull any punches. I love that it is as toxic and shitty of as a, of a fight as it needs to be, because a lot of rom coms wouldn't go there that deep, right? They wouldn't sure. cut that deep, but the, it needs to cut that deep for Act Three to work, right? And we'll, well get there, yeah, but and I agree that's what for needs Act to happen to work because like part of it to me. Um, you know, he did have many opportunities to tell her about this, you know, and completely. About, and and she probably would have completely understood if he didn't. But at the same time, um, I understand a little bit on why it's not something you want to like just share completely. Um, but because well, he time, knows, if, well, there's other family. Sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. but there's other family members that he's pointing to where he's like, they got kicked out of the family. Like yeah. they got kicked yeah, out. Yeah, and of the his family. brother's like, "You need to be more Pakistani." Yeah, you have to do this. <clears throat> yeah, like you, you will get mom will disown you, and you know that. And yeah. so the and stakes are really big. And that's one of the things that makes her so mad too. Is she's like, "Why the fuck did you lead me on? If like I don't want to break up your family, you big dumb asshole." Totally. Like, and that's where her feelings become justified to me because I'm like, "Oh, well, yeah, he lied to you, but you can kind of see why." Like. A little bit there's you know uh but i understand why you would want to know as well yeah but uh when he's like long term can you see us together he's like no then that's that i mean they're th- that's so the hurtful it's so yeah. yeah it's like you've been stringing me like well and you think about it and you go this is you know we talk about this all the time we love we love and <clears throat> both identify with i think for obvious reasons movies about uh men and in uh a, a states of arrested development who refuse to grow up and accept responsibility, right? What like, you, how, whatever do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Our podcast is so great. Uh, anyway, but but yeah, I mean, you you think about these movies where we talk about this stuff, whether it be uh, something like High Fidelity or Chef or these different movies that are about men where like they're still failing to launch, and and we saw the sure. same thing with Sleepwalk. The movie with me. failure to launch does the same thing. <laughs> I was not referencing that, but obviously Sleepwalk Sleepwalk with me is like that also. And, and, is that and McConaughey. Yeah. 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 But, but, but <laughs> sorry, stop it. <laughs> is that him? And, uh, what's her name? Uh, um, is that, no, that was Fool's Gold. Hans' daughter, Kate Hudson. Or isn't that Fool's uh, Gold? Not. I don't know. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> we're gonna, all, all, all this is, we're cutting all this. Anyway. Um, we don't have to. But 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 again, you know, that's the thing that's happening here is that like he knows at some point he has to say, you guys, I'm not Muslim. I'm never going to be a lawyer. Yeah. Right. But he's terrified of that. And really what gives him that strength isn't just what happens to Emily and the love that he has for her, but it's also him meeting her parents. Yeah. Right. It That the fact that she gets sick. And he's he's forced got a, upon him. By the way, he's got a booty call. He's like in bed with another girl. Yeah, he's moved on. Time to get a call yeah, about your ex girlfriend. Exactly, in the exactly. I but, mean, he, he gets put 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 in awkward positions throughout this movie. Yeah, and you know, there's certain points where you know he has to make a decision of to put her in a medical coma or not. And they're uh, pressing so hard, like, hey, she's gonna fucking die if yeah. you don't do this. So I will ask you again, are you her husband? <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. And and so you know, and then so he ha- he's already had to make that decision. I love the moment where he takes her finger to open her phone and says such a great Sorry. detail. Such a great detail. It, it is just it's a small little thing, but it's just like he's already like feels like he shouldn't be here and now he's hacking into her phone uh, or whatever. Yeah. And so you have that element to it. And then he's made this huge decision to save her life. And, you know, he's not landing with the parents when they get there. Not at uh, all. They're like, we know exactly we who know you who are. you are. You shouldn't Ooh, be here. And yeah. try, try and get out of it. But he doesn't give up. And it keeps weighing on him. You know, um, he talks about it in his stand up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's it's really, you know, it's a lot of pressure, I think, for for him and again, you're being forced in this situation partly because of how you feel about her and you feel bad about how they left. Yeah. And that's it. That in turn makes it about you when this is really about her just trying to survive. And right? that's the thing, man. Like you think about any of like your, you know, hookup that turns into some kind of pseudo relationship and then ends really poorly. If all of a sudden it was like, no, now you need to go back to the hospital and you're going to meet her parents. And you're like... <clears throat> 
I don't want to I mean, do any of that. <laughs> I'm sure Holly Hunter's like 5'3", but I would be scared if she was my mother. Oh, my God. Her presence here, she does such... She's I mean, always amazing. She's always she amazing. Ever bad? Never. But, but here in particular, you... I love how prickly her character is, especially at the beginning. Yes, because she has to be. She's defensive, and then you, and then she unfolds in this way. They have and, a night, you know. They have oh a night. God, it's man, a, it's all a great of that is so. The the pacing of this, the payoffs do not feel like if you just saw it on paper, beat by beat, you'd go, eh, yeah, I guess that's a movie. But the way that it's directed, the way that it's acted, the way that the dialogue is written. Every payoff feels totally earned. We haven't talked about it, but Mike Show Showalter directed this movie. Uh, I don't know if you realized that I or not. I did not yeah, realize so like, that. Oh, wow, know, really? So, yeah. Um, wow. It's funny. But you seem to be very, like, happy. Like, it was a satisfying watch. Oh, know, my God. I it. thought it was brilliant. I, right. I, I really, really deeply enjoyed it. Um, I felt like it had, for a movie that... You 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 have a pretty good idea going into it that the stakes are going to be low, even though they seem high, mm -hmm. right? Like it's very unlikely that the movie is going to be like, and she died. <laughs> You'd be like, Jesus, why did you make this movie, right? <laughs> um, so you know at the end of the day, like the odds are really high that this whole stinking ball of wax is going to get unstitched and it's going to be okay. With his family and with her. It feels that way, but I, I feel like it's done so tastefully and there are enough twists and turns in the story and the way that it's written, the pathos is really there. And so it feels, it's enjoyable. It's enjoyable to go through all of it because you don't know exactly. Even if it's sad and there's ups and yeah, downs. Yeah, and, and you don't totally. You, you know, don't... she gets better, then she gets worse. You know, like we, we go through all of that. Well, and when she comes out of the coma, and this is really where we get to act yeah. three, a, a, most movies would be, she gets out of the coma, finds out he's always been there for her, and then there's a resolution, right? And we, we'll, we'll wait till the last 10 minutes to get to that. Mm -hmm. But instead what happens here, I love there's this moment that could only be written by someone who's gone through this yeah. experience like his wife did, where she's like, you know, they, they tell you that you're supposed to have this epiphany of like every sunset is precious. And she's like, but really I'm just pissed my body can't do what it used to do. Like, And you I'm still went, mad at you. And I'm still mad at you. You went through all of this. Mm-hmm. I was asleep while you went through all of that. Yeah. I'm I'm the same person I was it's a at weird the twist beginning to of throw that. in there, right? Like you just go, oh my God, but that's <laughs> real life. Like you're not gonna have it, you're not gonna be regarding Henry where you're like, I'm yeah. a better person because <laughs> half, yeah, half of my ritz. Yeah, half of my lawyer brain got <laughs> shot out of my head onto a brick wall. So now I can be a person who feels again and loves my children. I bought a dog. Uh -huh. Like you don't have that happen. I know I've, I always drag that movie, but but it's I think not that a like movie. no, it's 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 actually a very good movie. But <laughs> but I think that the that idea is is very fake. Yes. Where most people, their experience, if they do come out of a horrible experience like that, they're not like the that, same person, right? Yeah. Yeah, and they're or or they are the same person. Yeah. They're just pissed that this bullshit happened to them. Yeah. And that's where she's at. Where she's like, yeah. you make me sad, right? I mean, she's doped up when she says it to yeah, him, she but she's is. like. You, um, you hurt my heart. But it's honest. And, you know, as an audience member who just went through all of that, you have to, like, step back and think of that perspective. You're like, oh, yeah. Because, you know, when he brings his bag of devotion. <laughs> after all of his out, badges. Yeah. yeah. And, like, just like this his, cheesy stuff. That his he's, jar of ashes. Yeah. Of, you know, in retrospect, this was a really bad idea. <laughs> he's like, these are all the Indian women or Pakistani women. And he's like, not Pakistan. They're not the women. <laughs> they're not the women. They're the photos the of the women. Yeah. This was a bad idea. I shouldn't but, have brought this. But, you know, this. it takes her, and I, I appreciate this about the movie, it takes a while for her to, like, come around, you know? And it's when his improved one-man show um, is starting and he's leaving. But, you know, we do get a payoff with her, right? Yeah. But we don't with the family. I love that. Yeah. I, I couldn't ask for more than... Just the little nudge of where he's like, but we do. And I love his strategy of he comes in and he's like, I'm still a member of the family. You can't disown me. Yeah, and he has like late. his little cue cards and all that. Like, I thought, what a great way to 
And try I wonder to, if he really did that. I him. mean, I bet he did. <laughs> what a great way to try and neutralize, you know, this age old idea, because like really the, the whole arranged marriage thing. And, yeah. you know, when, when his mother says to him was such deep hurt, it's the one thing he wants, right? Yeah. And she's like, you're so, you're being so selfish. And you're like, and you know what that reminded me of a lot is when we talked about, we got in that really deep conversation about individual versus collective society when we did the farewell. Yeah. Right. And it's this, the Western idea of the young person needs to go out and strike out on their own and find their own way in the world. And you go, that is a Western concept that collective societies whether that be again in the farewell with China or here with Pakistan, they see that as you're abandoning what you're here to do, right? And but he has a justified response, I think, where he, he does. where he's like, you know, the rules don't really make sense to me. He doesn't know what he believes, right? He, he tells them he's not praying. He confronts his parents at yeah. one point where they kind of bombard him, but he finally admits uh, the time with Emily. But he's like. You know, I want the American dream. You brought me here. To Why did have you bring the, me here? If you didn't want me uh. to have the American dream. And that's an excellent question. Uh. Like if you just wanted to be to marry a Pakistani woman, why did we move here? And I understand their side, especially from the old school cultural, like, hey, this is, we sacrificed ourselves so you could have this. Yeah, this is about all of us. This, and this is, is the all only we want, thing we're asking for. the only for. thing we want you to do. While we're talking about that, I mean, such a fascinating cultural concept. While we're talking about this, can we just talk about the fact that while he is deeply funny and obviously a great writer, Kamal can act. Yeah, no, he's gone he on to is, do a lot of good stuff. The the moment in this that just, like, hurt, hurt, the hurt my, food. my heart. Food, well, yeah. oh, my God. The, yeah, the four <laughs> slices of cheese. You know what that scene reminded me of? Okay, let's talk about that really quick, and then I'll talk about the scene I was going to reference. But but the, the the four slices of cheese, then yelling at the guy, and then it's one of those classic that guys. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. He's he's, he's another character actor. Tall yeah, actor. But yeah. didn't that feel like it came straight out of like a Duplass film? Sure. Where it's like, and then he apologizes and put all puts all the. Trash. It felt like something from Comfy Chair. I like it. it's like you're talking about the puffy thing by chair. or Puffy Chair. You're talking about the thing by not talking about mm -hmm. the thing, right? But just what a brilliant moment there. But the one, she's still in the coma. It's just the two of them, and it like I got tears in my eyes just from his performance. But he says, and I this I would believe this is completely real life because it's not. It feels again so effortlessly not written um he said he says to her if you have to go then go but it'd be really great if you stayed like talking about whether or not she's gonna die and i was like Ooh, ouch yeah. like it's so it feels so i mean obviously it's wittier than than <clears throat> than life is Right, it's sure. it's more clever than I'm life is. I'm pretty sure her dad said didn't say call me if you feel a coma coming on. You sure, know, like there's there's probably there's some, some of that, some, some of that. Yeah. But with those exceptions, it it feels like such a lived in world, and the way that they're all talking to each other, like it was just such a joy to be in this world for for that hour and a half Man, like I, I did not expect you i like i figured you'd like this movie and i actually wasn't sure if you had seen it or not but you you seem very smitten with it and i really i'm am. really happy I, I, i'm glad you got to discover it. it 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 really was and and honestly like ray romano's character and the, his their interactions together i could have watched a whole movie of just that like just for sure just the awkwardness but also like the kind of hurt and and uncomfortable honesty underneath the awkwardness it's true and it goes all the way to the end especially with the family where the mom still comes but won't look at him yeah and he brings she made him his favorite meal with extra potatoes and the dad has to still kind of berate him but is also like yeah i'm uh, forbidden to hug you but yes. text me when you get there so you yeah. know you're okay and, <laughs> and you're like definitely gone from this family forever but text us when you get there. yeah and you're like <laughs> they're gonna be okay and yeah. we're not idiots we don't need to see yeah. a big reunion together exactly, we yeah. we understand that this is a way of showing that like they'll get there and, they, and if you want to... that look watch the credits because there's real pictures and right. everything so but also like i like that we also live in this discomfort where it's like it, to kamal's point it wasn't the end of the world, but it's going to take a fucking while, right? It's yeah, yeah. it's it's probably going to be but shitty it moves to for New a York, while, and that's really kind of how it ends. Yeah, it? and we know the rest of the story. Yeah, right. Um, 
Fantastic. I love some of my favorite quips. I think one of Emily's at the very top of the movie when she's like, I'm uh, I don't I don't have sex twice on a first date. I'm not that kind of a girl. <laughs> I was just like, what? that's so perfect. Yeah, th their relationship at the beginning is super cute. Uber driver life. stuff is fucking hilarious where yeah. she's like, were you available the whole time we were having sex? And he's like, I only looked a couple of times. <laughs> he's like, your driver just needs to put on his underwear. <laughs> Great movie, though. Uh, fun part of the fest. Probably didn't have as much to do about stand-up as, as we probably initially wanted to, but I love I love the periphery of it. Yep. And it is an important part of his character, especially the you know, the celebrity side, how they meet, uh, every, all of that stuff. So, and uh, how he works through his issues actually in part, yeah. sometimes the terrible uh, review on stage. Oh yeah. That what and, and you know, living in the age of YouTube where everything is on camera, the or worst YouTube, stand up you've ever and seen. And she gets to watch it and see what he went through a little bit. Yeah. And again, kind of reminds me of chef. It's yeah, like, yeah, it's no, all right. online. That's it automatically a good point. goes no, there. It's actually a pretty good comparison. So. I'm just happy that they finally made a movie about my favorite Smith song. <laughs> Girlfriend in a coma, I know, I know. <laughs> oh, you've been holding it's on to that serious. one. That's great. All right, well, please like and subscribe. That is the third installment of our stand-up festival. Our final film will be Lenny, about Lenny Bruce, the Bob Fosse yes, movie. Bob Fosse. Uh, next week, though, we are going to review that one scene from Crouching, Crouching Tiger, Tiger, Hidden, Hidden Dragon. Dragon. Um, so I'm excited for that. Please join us on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, and I'm on Letterbox now, so you can follow me on there, Adam Poultry. All, All right. right, thanks everyone. Join us, and we'll see you soon. Bye, you guys. Oh.